Good morning, good afternoon. Raquel Redmond from Brava Art Press presenting how to make puppets. But these are puppets that are different from the other puppets that we have in our website. These puppets are probably for older students or adults. And they are inspired on the puppets that artist Paul Clay made with his son Felix. It is a, it's a wonderful story because they made these puppets together out of little bits and pieces that they found around home, like old jackets or an old skirt. So with all of these bits, they have fun. So Paul Clay and his son Philip made these puppets and the idea was to represent some of the characters in their town. So you will find some of them are probably representing the butcher, another one represents the teacher, another one probably represents the pharmacist, who knows? You can do anything. You can create a puppet thinking about a, somebody you know or something that you saw in a magazine or something that you draw. Any source of inspiration to create these characters. I had a lot of fun making this lady. She's my favorite puppet because it's not only just to make the face, it's to create, to dress up your characters, to, to sew, a cut and design a costume like this. So we need several things to make this project. The projects of, of Brava Arts are mainly ideas. They can be interpreted in any way you like. You can make anything you like. But this is just basic information about what you need and how to, to do things. But the, the, the decision of what to be made is absolutely up to the student. So this is part of a men's jacket. So I'll use that to uh, make the next costume. We need newspaper to cut our pattern for the costume. Again, you can do any pattern you like. You can have this sort of a square very simple costume or you can have uh, something that is more rounded or it's probably like a, an A shape. So it's up to you, newspaper for that. We need also a, a different things here, a paper, newspaper and masking tape if you are going to do this as a paper, mache and plaster project a bit of corrugated cardboard for, to form the neck. The neck is very important because that's how you attach the costume. If you are using clay, this is one made out of clay. And if you made a character out of clay, the way to go is you will need to cover that uh, head with plastic wrap before you apply the um, plaster, plaster strip. I made this stand to display the puppets, made out of two bottles. We need these um, plaster, plaster strips. They come in rolls like that, in, in little packets. Cut about that size is the best size, not, not long strips, that's very complicated. Uh, the scissors, and I'm going to show you an alternative. We have these very nice um, material, which is um, kitchen wipers. They are very good for this kind of projects, if you don't want to use the plaster. So this is the costume that I have already made of bits and pieces, a bit of um, jumpers or sweaters, uh, the men's jacket, this brown piece, uh, a little bit of a scarf, some old buttons, and lots of hand sewing. Hand sewing is so good for everybody. It's beautiful. It's, it's a nice, it's a very relaxing activity. So that is the costume that I have made. So next we will make the head. I'll talk a bit more about the head and what you use. And also I'll show you when the camera comes closer, I'll show you some pictures of um, Paul Place puppets. Here I have some uh, samples of the puppets, the actual uh, pictures of the actual puppets. Very simple um, costumes or bodies. Uh, that's the, um, the head made out of plaster and drawn or painted. Uh, it's another one here. And there is another very different head here with ears, probably it's an animal. But you can, you can see how the bits and pieces are sewn together. 
that is the whole puppet here. This this one is the head and that is the whole body with different things sewn here. Very, very simple uh, body. And here is a wonderful group of them with the drawing of the um, heads here, the, the, the features, the mouth, the eyes, the nose. Again, very simple costume. So there's a lot, a lot um, to do, to imagine. I got here a drawing that I did actually is a print. First I did the drawing and then I printed, I did a print of this man that I found in the markets. So this, he is my inspiration for one of the puppets. I'm not going to make this puppet here in, on camera because it takes a long time to make the whole thing, but he is going to be my inspiration. And that's what I'm saying to you. If you have a photo, if you have a drawing, if you have a print, you can use it as an inspiration. So here we have the, the, the samples here. This is how I start then uh, with clay, if you are going to use clay. Clay gives you more details, uh, uh, three-dimensional details, and the features, the hair, ears. And after you finish, it's important to uh, apply the plastic wrap, uh, pressing on all the features like that, so the plastic is not going to stick on the clay. Here is this one that I made already, which is going to be, is based on that man that I show you, the, the picture of the man that is my inspiration. I have done the plaster over the head, over the, the clay. The plaster is set up very hard now, and I have cut with a knife like this. That's why it's not for young children, this project, because they, uh, unless the teacher or parents cut them, you have to cut across there and all the way to the other side like that through the, the um, plaster to take the mold off. So that's how you go. Carefully take it off and take it off like that. Carefully this is more difficult because you got all the, the details. So there we are. And this is the clay model. The alternative that I like to show you is this. This is uh, a head. It doesn't have um, many details, just the general shape of the head as, uh, as uh, Paul Clay did. And um, using newspaper masking tape and also a bit of corrugated car here to make the neck. And this is the one that we are going to work on. I just like to show you what happens after the uh, head of the puppet has come out of the clay mold. That I have two pieces here and I have to put them together. So holding them like this and with a bit more pl plaster strips, I just put this in water like that and I start joining this together. I got a bit of clay in my hands and just put it together like that. Remember that the plaster will set very quickly, so a bit more water just to make it nice and soft and smooth. And more here. Around there. I can just use my two hands now. More water, apply like that. So that's how you join the head together again, the two, if you are going to go with this technique. So the next thing that we will do is work on this. We have the, the mold, the frame ready, made out of paper, as I said. But to avoid mess in the classroom or at home, I got a tray. This tray is uh, like a fish and chips tray that you can, or any other food tray or any tray, and a piece of paper here because we are going to work with water and plaster. So I got my head here, the plaster and the water. So for, for younger students it's important. I'm doing just like this with one hand, like that, applying. But for younger students it's better to hold it like this with two hands and put it down there like this and overlap. Overlapping is very important. It's exactly the same, uh, the same method as um, paper mache. It's like you are paper mache this this uh, head here. Keep going. 
overlap again. You see how the water comes into the newspaper there and smooth it out like this until you cover the whole. We, I have one here, one layer. I, I like to do two layers just to, to, do, um, to make it stronger. That's the second layer there and here going into the neck. The neck is important because that's where you attach the costume. So here is the alternative. Um, if you would like to use something different from the plaster strips, sometimes uh, they can be a bit expensive. So this is really good. This is kitchen cloth. This is what mum buys to clean the, the kitchen table. So we apply exactly the same. So in this case, we're using glue. So I'm going to apply the glue here with my hand, or you can use a, a paintbrush, but I, I prefer to use my hand like that. A bit of glue. It could be any, any glue. It could be even wallpaper paste. That probably would be the best, wallpaper paste. And you apply exactly the same as you did with the plaster. Exactly the same. Glue it again. Glue the next one. With, as I said, I like to work with my hands. As an artist, everything has to be done touching. I like the, the touch of different, different things. But it's, it's good to apply with a, a paintbrush if you want to at home or in, at school. So that's overlapping again. And it goes two layers of this kitchen cloth. And if you want to give it a nice finish, a layer of tissue paper. So if to, to finish it up in a nice, smooth um, surface, tissue paper. Never apply glue to the tissue paper because the tissue paper is very, very, very um, thin. So you put the put a tissue paper in on place there and then apply the glue, rub the glue over the top like that. Okay, so that will give that a nice finish so you can paint. Here is our head finish, all plastered, and you can keep, if it's still wet, you can still smooth it out like that with your fingers. And as you can see, there is a big mess here, but it's all on the tray and the newspaper. So at the end of the, um, the plastering stage, you just roll it up and dispose the paper and you have a clean area again, get rid of the, 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 the whole lot and you have a clean, dry area to work again. Now we will um, cut the, um, the pattern. It's very simple, you can do whatever you like. Uh, so what I did was uh, a piece of newspaper, double piece of newspaper like this, and on the edge here, you just draw half of your pattern. So I'll draw half of the pattern. I'll probably do something different this time, like that, similar to Paul Clay, and then just go up like that, or down like this, and I'll cut. So it's very simple. Cut it like that. And like that. So here is the pattern for your costume. It's quite big, so I, I think I have to cut this arms a bit shorter, like that. So it, it's uh, okay to fit on the piece of um, fabric that I have. For the fabrics, as I explained before, I have a piece of uh, an old jacket like this. Um, there is the, the inside and I have cut, this is the back of the jacket and I'll fit my I pattern there to see if, yep, I, I, I'm trying to see if it fits, it does. But instead of a, an old jacket or an old skirt, if you have an old curtain, it's also good. Here is an old curtain and I can use that, it's no problem. But I really like to use the, this wool um, fabric. So I'll set up my pattern here and before I cut, 
you can use pins if you can use pins like that to pin it up like that or simply if you are not allowed to use pins in the classroom use masking tape like that and that is pretty good so I'll cut I'll always cut a little bit over the edge there because it's easier so we keep cutting this way like that and if you have used the masking tape just cut over it it's very very simple and that is the body the next step is just to add bits and pieces as Paul Clay did so we have to separate them very carefully just put that aside and you will work on the top facing facing up and do a bit of planning probably a scarf if you feel like or something all, all with bits and pieces uh, nothing new really we can do all of this with um, recycle bits and pieces uh, we can have uh, something like hang across there plan a bit like that and use pins or masking tape to keep your bits in position or pins you can have all buttons like this one if you like so it's ready to sew I got a tapestry needle here it's um, it's, it's called chenille, chenille needle number 18 it's all going to be on the blog and this cotton is called crochet cotton and I'll make a knot like that and start the sewing so I'll start here just running stitch like this running stitch like that in push and out that's the running stitch you can go over that way or you can come this way push in pull out until you finish then you put it together again the two bits that you had together again and stitch all around starting from this edge all around here stopping here because we need to leave that open the neck open to set up the head and also down here also leave it open now we are going to paint apply paint a bit of color on the head so I have mixed this color which is um, a pinky for a pinky face but it could be blue it could be red it could be black it could be any colors as you saw on the Paul Clay's um, puppets that I show you to paint these, uh, the head of the puppet you can use a um, tempera I got here a very super duper um, chroma 2 heavy body tempera that you could use but you can also use something uh, acrylic acrylic paint chroma acryl so I, either acrylic or heavy body tempera so here we have the finished head it's very nice and firm it's quite um, it's still a bit wet but we can paint already so applying the paint you can apply the paint with a paintbrush but if you want it to dry quickly I'll and, and give them that quality of uh, Paul Clay's um, painted faces apply with a sponge like that a little bit there and rubbing on o over the um, so you will have a bit of a white showing through there and the, the advantage of applying a paint with um, a sponge is that it dries a lot quicker than the uh, paint, applying with the paintbrush. Here we are with these uh, two wonderful puppets uh, inspired by the puppets of Paul Clay and his son Felix. Last um, take we did was where I show you um, how to apply the color on the face of the puppet. So at this point the puppet is done. So out of camera I have done the rest. I apply um, the features, the mouth and eyes and painted the nose and, 
and applied the hair. Uh, as you can see, there is a lot of work on the puppets, lots of sewing, lots of uh, the working with features, making them all with clay, as you saw before, or the alternative with paper mache. And I have to remind you that these puppets are really ideal for all the students or for adults. In uh, our website, we have different videos for different age groups. So we have um, a technique on how to sew the, the running stitch, how to make the paper mache, how to apply paint, how to paint the face. To find more information about what you need and how to make these, visit our internet website, bravaartpress.com blog. It will be in the blog. Thank you for watching and happy puppy making.